Bonjour, everyone, and welcome to a everyone. And not every bon, everyone. You didn't get the English part. I know. I can't, I, can, I can't speak English, but I can speak decent French. No, I can't. Um, anyways, hello, everyone. That's better. Uh, welcome to another episode of You Missed It. Uh, I am your host, Jack, and uh, it's my movie today. And today I picked The Rocket, uh, released in 2005. Uh, now, before I continue, just wanted to qu- give a quick shout out to our social media uh, pages. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at YMI underscore podcast. You can find us on YouTube at uh, YouTube pod- uh, You Missed It Podcast on YouTube. You can find us on iTunes. You can find us on Instagram. You can find us on Facebook. You can find us almost everywhere now. So uh, listen, share, subscribe. Get us out there, folks. Uh, anyway, so today... Um, again, as I said, I picked the movie The Rocket, and it's a 2005 sports biopic about NHL legend Maurice The Rocket Richard, and the movie chronicles his, uh, from his humble beginnings to his ascension with the Montreal Canadiens, as well as dealing with and confronting the constant discrimination that he and other French-Canadian hockey players received in a league dominated by the English-speaking. It was directed by, and I, and I apologize uh, if I pronounce any of these French names wrong, so don't blame me. It was uh, directed by Charles Benami, uh, written by Ken Scott, and it stars uh, uh, Roy Dupuy as Maurice Rocket Richard, Julie Le Breton, who uh, is the, plays uh, Maurice's wife, and Stefan McHattie. Um, the movie also features uh, former NHL players uh, Vincent LeCavier, Mike Ricci, Ian Lapierre, Pasquale Dupuy, and Sean Avery. Um, the movie was made on a budget of $8 million. Um, I couldn't find the uh, what the movie made. It's on. There's no information on that, so I have no idea what it, it made. It made nothing. It made nothing, yeah, pretty, I guess. Um, it was nominated for um, 13 Genie Awards, which mm. are the uh, Canadian uh, Oscars, for those who don't know. It won nine, mm-hmm. um, including Best Actor. Best Supporting Actor, Best Act, Supporting Actress, Best Director, uh, Best Production Design, Best Cinematography, Best Costumes, Best Editing, and Best Sound Editing. However, it lost Best Picture to uh, Bon Cop, Bad Cop. Ah. Um, and for those of you who don't know who Maurice the Rock of Richard is, um, here's, our, here's his career highlights and notable achievements. Uh, he is an eight-time Stanley Cup winner, including winning five in a row during his last five uh, NHL seasons. He uh, played 978 games, scored 544, becoming the very first NHL player to ever score 500 goals in a career. When he retired, he was the leading scorer in both goals and points. Uh, He is a 14-time All-Star. He's also notably the first player to ever score 50 goals in 50 games, uh, in a feat only accomplished by five other players in NHL history. Uh, That includes Wayne Gretzky, Mario Lemieux, Mike Bossy, and Brett Hall. Uh, Gretzky did it three times. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, um, when Maurice Merchard died in the year 2000, he was the first non-politician honored by the province of Quebec with a state funeral. Hmm. So he was that iconic in, in Quebec. Um, one of the things um, I think should be noted is, I'm like, I almost kind of wish they had this in the movie, is um, four years before they died, when they closed the form, um, in 1996, um, they brought out all the old former great Montreal players. And when they brought Maurice out, the fans gave him a 20-minute standing ovation where Maurice was even, like, t- telling them to stop, but they wouldn't stop. And eventually Maurice started, broke down and cried, and they mm. knew they got him. I remember that. Oh, it's great. It's one yeah. of the best, like, NHL yeah. moments, period. Yeah, um, I remember a lot of that. I remember when he died, too. It was, like, a national – it was it was a huge – it was a big deal nationally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, no, here. he's um, a – just an icon in Canada. He's an icon in hockey. He's an icon, especially in Quebec. He's a national hero. And the movie itself, uh, uh, what's kind of neat is um, Roy Dupuy is reprising his role as Maurice Richard as he played Maurice Richard in one of the famous um, Canadian Heritage shorts. Oh. <laughs> um, that I remember that it. short too. Yeah. Uh, up in like the 90s they used to play they still play a few, uh, new ones now these one minute kind of like commercials yeah. that showcased a moment in canadian history and one of them was maurice when he was moving all his furniture to his house and he yeah. gets hurt and they think can he even play and he went on winds up scoring eight points in one game which was a record yeah. until um daryl Siller uh broke it uh with 10 points uh in the 70s so so yeah it's kind of neat how they brought him back and all mm. that but 
Um, so yeah, I hadn't seen this movie in a while. Um, when I first saw it, I really liked it. Um, and upon re-seeing it, uh, I, my opinion still holds. I think this is a solid hockey movie. I think it's one of the best ones out there. And the pool of good hockey movies is admittedly quite small. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it stands out among a small batch. And uh, yeah, no, I, I kind of want to get this going. So I'm curious to see what y'all think of it. So uh, move on to Rylan. Uh, what did you think of The Rocket? I, I liked The Rocket. I liked it a lot. Uh, it's it's not your uh, typical sports movie. I feel like it's not your typical uh, like glory seeking story or you know your your coach recovering a, a struggling team story or you know somebody needing to get their mojo back or or whatever any of those kind of typical storylines that you usually that you usually see. It's about it's about uh maurice uh going using his using his passion and raw talent to drive his way through uh through an organization that basically doesn't really care if he's there or not um he's investing all of his uh all of his effort all of his passion into into this and he's and he's aware that that uh he needs to do this to support his family and he's aware that it could especially because of his health that it could all be taken away instantly and yet he that's that's the world he's in now it's the path he's chosen for himself and he's forced to stick with it and 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 you can you you learn very quickly about him that he's a prideful person and along the way uh he has to you know he he has to sacrifice his integrity in some places even just for the sake of his family like he needs to he 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 keeps his mouth shut about the uh, all the discrimination and such uh, for years and years until he finally finally does say something and then immediately he the backlash uh, he's he's forced to recant it and you can you can it, this is this is near the end of the movie mind you but you can see that that just it just kills him at that point and and you know when you think like a hockey movie you think you think bright lights you think bright colors and stadiums but this the, the movie it's actually it's actually quite dark, almost gritty looking. Like there's a lot of there's a lot of grays, a lot of browns, and a lot of the color. I mean, except for the actual Montreal Canadiens jersey, just comes from the kind of stark, overexposed lighting, which I thought was interesting as well. The whole thing kind of had this had this graininess to it. Yeah, it matches what um, a lot of old photographs and old footage look like of that era of hockey. Like if you look, go through like old photos from the 40s, 30s, 50s, or whatever. Like they all have that kind of like they captured the vibe and the feel of that era like i think really good like mm-hmm. it, it, it's a yeah it's a very interesting stylistic choice but mm-hmm. i i really liked it yeah this definitely isn't a mighty ducks movie that's for sure mm-hmm. um yeah <laughs> the zach, score they kept yeah. it subdued simple <laughs> yeah for sure um <clears throat> zach uh what did you think i think this uh this might be the second best hockey movie only to uh the great uh score a hockey musical <laughs> that's the, the best hockey movie um that's on the list yeah no uh, no i think this is yeah it's really good um i was the thing that stood out the most for me honestly i mean besides the story you know and, and being an important one to tell right is uh, the cinematography yeah, that was outstanding yeah like i thought like you were saying like i think they really captured the era and i, I just thought they did a really you know did really interesting things that i think a lot of canadian films kind of lack where it makes it a little more cinematic it makes it a little more its own thing right and mm. makes it appeal to more people if they go and see it um yeah i thought it was really good i thought uh you know the score was good too i thought like when it crept in and um stefan mccaddy is always great as well he was the coach in the movie he's he's always a standout i find in like everything and he really shined in this too mm-hmm. um what was it roy dupuy played roy dupuy yeah yeah uh he was good too as uh you know maurice richard and yeah i mean it was it was just a solid movie you know overall um i did find it was kind of long at parts just a little bit mm-hmm. not too long just maybe a little too long but i know i realize there's a lot to fucking cover too i mean the fact that they kind of end it and there's still five more years of him like winning stanley cups and stuff is like oh shit you they could have even covered that you mm-hmm. know yeah his, yeah, well, his but, career was longer than pretty much any hockey players at that point and yeah. a hot streak is basically yeah. lasting your entire career then there's a lot yeah. of highlight you yeah. know stuff so. yeah his career there, there hadn't well obviously there had never been a career like a hockey player like him before so the idea and they they mentioned that like you know yeah uh, i think they pointed out at a certain point i think when he's 34 yeah yeah they're like you're still you had your best still season going. ever so i mean 
yeah he he's uh there's way it's way too long of a career and yeah. way too many stanley cups to to focus in on that oh yeah, yeah. It, it, it'd, be, it'd be way too long so i get it yeah. um and, and plus but, the story yeah. wasn't really 100 percent focused on his playing career no. it was sort of paralleled with um the main heart of it is just him struggling against those who put him down, particularly the, the, the English. English versus French. Yeah, exactly. Um, I feel like a lot of kind of the, the sub themes of the movie as well is kind of about hockey becoming something that everyone can enjoy. Is like you see that mm. at the start of the movie, they have like the cheap seats like penned off in like a cage mm-hmm. and then they they, they, te- they they are like literally tearing down the walls at the end and yeah. everybody yeah. enjoys the game together. So you have the class union, you have people overcoming language and cultural barriers. Like mm-hmm. it's, I feel like it's it's kind of about showing that time where, where hockey kind of became for, for everyone and something that Canadians in general can yeah. all kind of rally around. Yeah, and just around that time too, like between when they won the five straight, um, I think that's um, around the same time that a lot of things were starting to change. Like the NHL, um, um, I'm blanking on his name at the top of my head, but the in Boston had um, introduced the first African-American player to ever play in the NHL in the 50s as well. Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> Don't ignore that. Um, and don't ignore that. No, I say I said ignore that. No, okay. no, don't ignore it. Send <laughs> send tiki torches to Jack's house. No, <laughs> to no. Jack's, yes. Oh, fuck, Mailbox. Fuck that. Anyways, um, and now like you look in the NHL now, just how many different players from different countries now play in the NHL from Sweden, Finland, Czech Republic. Mm-hmm. Um, there's even been some players from like China and all that. Yep. It's, it's crazy just how much now it's an international league. Mm-hmm. Um, and how far we have come. So I feel like that the movie kind of captures how, you know, when someone finally does stand up to say, hey, this is crap, we shouldn't stand for this anymore. Um, you, we've, we've witnessed the ripple effect of that. And You're uh, right. It's it's so international that they're not even going to the Olympics anymore. I, <laughs> 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 Just the NHL. You know, they want their own uh, World Cup and all that. So yeah. all about that money. The Muda. One step forward. That's right. Two it's steps it's forward, truly step a forward. World Cup when it's just the NHL. And, oh, the World Cup. They had other international players from other leagues to play, but it's it was run by the NHL. But I know what you mean. It's it's a little silly now. It's about uh, it's money. Yeah. yeah. But anyways, Andrew, um, you're the only one who had seen this movie uh, besides myself. How, how was it again? Seen again? Um, it I I yeah. So I liked it a lot the first time I saw it. Um, I still liked it this time. So I I mean my opinion hasn't really changed. Um. I like it a lot. I think it's it's in the top tier of, of hockey movies. There aren't a lot, like you said. Um, I don't know. Mighty Ducks is uh, still a pretty damn good hockey movie. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah. I mean, this one, I appreciate the approach a lot more and, and the story it tries to tell. Uh, it doesn't just try to focus in on the hockey so much, uh, which I like. Uh, you know, because hockey does have, you know, they, they do have that typical oh, let's do the underdog story or the, you know, like Miracle was, you know, Hollywood putting out a typical sports movie that focuses in on the hockey, yeah. right? Or the team winning yeah. the yeah. game, Well, it's, right? a, it's another yeah. Disney you know? hockey movie and Disney yeah. has made those type of hockey movies. You know, they oh, did yeah. the Mighty Duck yeah, movies, pretty, the Miracle. Like, it's a pretty, like Miracle's a pretty good movie, but it's pretty by the book. Yep. It, it's yeah. so by the book. Like Same. I was in a, hu- I, I, I liked it, like, but I wasn't a huge fan. I preferred this film over that. You wouldn't I say it's a Miracle, would you? Too, and, and still today. Yeah, I think it's a better shot film. I think it's a better. It's a more, uh, at least for us, can, uh, for Canadians, um, it means more. Whereas sure, Miracle yeah. is definitely an American. Oh yeah, movie. I feel like if you're a hockey fan, you you have to appreciate Maurice Richard, though, no oh, matter yeah. what, right? So it doesn't matter if you're you know American or Canadian. I feel like you should. <clears throat> you won't relate to the French Canadian thing, but even mm-hmm. English speakers on the West Coast wouldn't relate to that as much either. Yeah, they don't, they don't get it, and and a lot of you know, it's it's an old problem as well. It's something that. That you felt, uh, well, it's not That's entirely, gonna say, you but still it's something. See it today. Yeah, but not, not to nearly as much yeah, because right. I mean, uh, there's a, there's a, there was so much progress that was made immediately after that, mm-hmm. uh, Canada wide, right? So they're saying like we're so used to like there was a line in that movie where oh we're so used to losing, you know, like we just want to win just in sport, you mm-hmm. know, at least something we can win in. Yeah. Um, and that was kind of a commentary on like how you know French Canadians typically they were pretty de- they had a lot to to deal with at that time mm-hmm. uh, politically and uh, in general right and uh, it it improved a lot right especially after the charter so they had yeah. 
they got a lot of their rights. They got a they got a lot of uh, a lot more recognition to the point where you know obviously people see Canada now they 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 uh, really see it as being bilingual. Like that's mm-hmm. the uh, part of the cultural identity here. For sure. So I I, I think that um, I, I think that it's it's relatable. It's it's a relatable movie, uh, even if if you don't quite get that aspect, just because it's it's a disadvantaged group, right? Mm-hmm. It's like a minority group, mm-hmm. so you know you see that in different contexts. In this case, it happens to be French Canadians. Yes. So I I, I think that uh, it's uh, it, it just it tells an inter- a more interesting story, mm-hmm. and, and I appreciate it for that. Yeah, no, the the I read that the the, um, the Richard riots um, that uh, the, the showcase the movie was sort of like the um, the launch kind of pad or the starting point of what was known as the Quiet Revolution in yeah. Quebec. Yeah, and this kind of like was the launch pad to yeah to that, which makes sense. Um, and yeah, no, and uh, for a little bit more history into the Richard riots, like how it actually st- like I bet you probably Zach mm-hmm. and you don't probably know much about how that actually started. Mm. Um, the commissioner after he suspended. Um, Richard just made the foolish uh, uh, idea to actually attend the Montreal game in Montreal in oh, person man. the next yeah. game and that's what led to yeah, you got attacked tear gas yeah. and all that yeah. stuff like it exploded and so it's like not really a common Website sense idea yeah. yeah no yeah. so it's just it's crazy just like how like you know people always tell like athletes you know stick to sports you know yeah yeah not politics do. and yeah. then yet they can have such profound influence and an impact yep. on on people it's 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 incredible um alex um last but not least so uh, what did you think <clears throat> fucking loved it oh great i'm not a sports guy by any means necessary but within the first 10 minutes of the film I was hooked. Hmm. I didn't care about about giving a second thought to the dialogue or the the shot or the flow or the tone of the film. I was in. I was all in. I wanted to know more about the story. I wanted to know more about the guy. Because, yeah, I was born in Canada, but unfortunately I didn't take French after grade 8. I'm sorry. I should have. I should have chosen. Now, for any of you young listeners out there, <laughs> in, when you're in high school, like I was in high school, in grade, when you get to grade nine, you have all your electives coming up. Choose French over gym. <laughs> gym is not that important. That's you can not. go outside and walk around. You need to learn French. You I wish need I to. Had a choice. Yeah, well, you didn't have a choice. No, was, you had to take both. Oh, good. <laughs> well, I was, yeah, and on the I'm East Coast, it was French, mandatory about gotcha. until grade 10, at least core French. If I didn't have gym, I wouldn't have passed high school, man. Gym was, <laughs> are you kidding? Gym was the only thing that ruined my straight A streak. I hated it. <laughs> it's, it's, it got me on the B honor roll, man. Uh, but anyways, continue. So, yeah, take French. <laughs> that's, that's the big lesson. That's, that's your Heritage Canada moment from this Mouse. podcast. Yeah. I... I don't think I had seen Roy Dupuis before. Mm-hmm. He looked familiar, though. Probably from the Heritage uh, commercial. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I, I don't. Re- Honestly, yeah. Uh, like, I, I, I totally forgot he was in that. And then when you mentioned it, I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it was, it's, it's weird. But, um, yeah, it, but you were you were, were you like much of a hockey guy though? Because like French, I I feel like French. Yeah, you could like all the French politics stuff. Like whatever that was that was before my time, but um, like as a, as a if you're a hockey fan, it's hard to like even though Maurice Richard was uh, you know retired, he was st- his impact was his uh, his legacy lived on right so even if you're like a young hockey fan even if you're born in the 90s and the 80s uh, 80s 90s even in the 2000s you knew maurice richard if you were into hockey just because his not number nine was iconic his records are were or you know his record his record breaking achievements were iconic everything everything i mean i grew up uh I, I grew up and I, I loved watching, I don't know if you ever seen it, uh, The Sweater. It was a little oh, anime. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It was, it was, it just tells a story about this, uh, about this, for those who haven't seen it, it's, a, it's this very short animated 
but um, mm-hmm. I had it on cassette. I don't know where it played. I forgot, like, if it, I think it played on TV as well. But it was uh, about this boy who uh, idolized, uh, you know, Maurice Richard, and all he wanted was a, a Canadian's jersey with the number nine on the back. And it's actually narrated by, uh, in English, but by a French Canadian, mm. like a French Canadian, a guy with a French Canadian accent. So the whole thing has this, like, I, I'm not sure. I guess maybe they did that on purpose, but. Uh, just to give it that feel that you're in, in in Quebec, right? Or this is a kid from from Quebec. So, uh, yeah, he just gets this sweater, and uh, or he really wants this sweater, but he accidentally gets a leaf sweater, like a <laughs> maple leaf <laughs> sweater. So, or, uh, so he, he gets the, the leaf sweater instead, and he's so upset, and all the kids are making fun because all the kids have a number, <clears throat> a sweater with the number nine on the back, yeah. right? And as a kid, that's all I wanted to. Mm. I just wanted a Canadian's jersey with the number nine on the back. So I, you know, I idolized him as well as a kid. So, right. I mean, uh, if you're a hockey fan, I think you 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 know you probably you should know Maurice Richard because he's an important figure in hockey. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like no, that's why I asked the question so I could see why. Like, if you're not a hockey fan, you could easily miss that. For sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm. I'm. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, I was going to let you continue. I remember the the Heritage Canada stuff. I remember the basketball one. Great, and that's I, a good one. I remember the Burnt toast. how we got the the Canada name yep. with, yeah. with oh, the, yeah. the media. I remember that, yeah. but I don't remember much else. I actually recently, just like two months ago, watched like fifty of these. <laughs> They're all on YouTube. They're and actually so great. There's some that I'm like <laughs> I I did not ever I had never seen. There's actually newer ones too, which I'm just like that blows me away. Ones? I know, I know the old ones. Great. Still make them. Some yeah. are actually like emotional. Yeah, some of them are like really emotional, and some of them are like really bad. Too. Halifax yeah. Explosion. Man. Oh, the Halifax Explosion one is great. Yeah. Like that one, and oh, it's just we're getting off topic, but uh, we'll sort of not, not really. entirely, not entirely <laughs> actually. Um, but yeah, no, it's uh, I've known about the I had known about the Maurice because I, I was a big hockey fan when I got into hockey. I just kind of just yeah. delved into the history and just became ups- almost an encyclopedia of like NHL history, and I really. Uh, I knew about Maurice Richard and just uh, what he had done and what he had did, what he had accomplished. And uh, so when I saw the movie, I was already kind of very familiar with the story. But there were some mm. things that I didn't even know. Like, I didn't know that uh, the league, like, gave, like, other players assists or just to push him down and all that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like, like they, they fudge the... Yeah, just the... little things like that. It's like, that is, like, stuff you... You'd never heard because why would the NHL want to admit that? Yeah, um, mm-hmm. that, oh, that's a huge scandal. If that was happening today. Good God, mm-hmm. yeah. you couldn't get away with it today, but still, it's well, just, yeah, everything's televised now. Yeah, so. yeah. And, they, and they keep track of everything. So, yeah. no I one... mean, a fan could watch games now and be like, exactly. "That didn't happen," <laughs> and they correct things all the time. Exactly, honestly. but yeah. still, the fact that 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 happened is in, is insane. It's it's a it adds more uh, layers to this already unique story. Um, yeah, no, and oh, I just had something in my mind, but uh, uh, what do you think of um, uh, some of the hockey, uh, uh, actual hockey uh, games that they were photographed that you've seen, say, in Slapshot or in Miracle in terms of, like, were they exciting um, or do you think uh, you've seen better? I mean, I don't think it really matters because, honestly, I mean, the movie to me, anyways, it didn't, it was, it was like, yeah, hockey was like the playground. It was like the main you know, obviously place of where everything went down, but it really was about the French and English kind of relations at that time and all of that to me. So it's like, yeah, you know, there were games and things like that. And it was, it was, it was good um, to answer, I guess, directly, but it was, um, I, I mean, it was, it was cool to kind of get the effect of that era and things like that more. So that kind of drew me in a little more, I think. Um, so like the game didn't really matter. It was like, oh yeah, he scores and things like that. But it's like, you know, it, you had to have that stuff in to kind of push mm-hmm. the rest of the story. You were, was, um, yeah. you were going on a lot about the um, all the exterior shots, how they were shot with this blue kind of tint. <laughs> yeah, and I'd seen a whole movie done like that, and I really liked it. And I'm forgetting what the cult, the the name of it is, but it's really good. Um, but yeah, it's it's a really cool effect, and I haven't really seen it since then. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and I just noticed it was like, yeah, the exteriors they were really kind of like that blue black and white kind of thing yeah i like it and then and it matches the tone completely because i used to watch mm-hmm. did, andrew did you ever watch um there used to be a show on all the time called legends of hockey where mm-hmm. they would go over um it was always on like uh, uh the score uh uh for those who lived in canada the score channel and they would always it was basically a half an hour program where they would talk about 
uh, a legendary hockey player. Yeah. And it was the most, like, well-produced and all that. And, yeah, no, I remember watching uh, all those, and that's where I got my introduction to a lot of all those famous hockey players for Montreal, like Boom Boom Jevrion, Dickie Moore, mm. and all that. And, actually, like, one of the players who the coach, uh, uh, when he says, like, how hard is it to put this into the neck? Into mm. this big net, and the one player just kind of laughs, and he goes, "Hey Blake, you better uh, smarten up." Mm-hmm. That player actually ended up being the coach for the Canadians during ah. the five consecutive wins. <laughs> That's funny. And he ended up winning ten Stanley Cups in as a coach. Damn. Um, yeah. To be, but he got actually no, sorry, he won eight, mm. and then Scotty Bowman won nine mm-hmm. to beat his record after that. Um, yeah, uh, what do you think of? Um, uh, the actress uh, who played his wife. Um, um, let me just find her name. Mm. Uh, da, 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 da. This is great uh, f- commentary right now. Uh, Julie <laughs> Le Breton. Uh, how do you think she played in the as a both as a character and also within the story? Uh, well, as, I don't know. As a character, just just the kind of the reminder of his responsibilities. So. I mean, I don't know. I don't really have a strong opinion about yeah. that. Yeah, I was, was, was going to say, say, well, I think yeah. I share that. <laughs> but yeah. she won She won Best Supporting Actress. For yeah, that. I don't know, man. Like, I, I, feel like, I feel like they were just going like, this is such a Canadian film. Let's <laughs> that's give just it add, everything. Yeah, that's you know? just added. Yeah. It, it's, yeah. You know, except, except Best Picture. <laughs> like, yeah. the, the, yeah, that's surprising. the actor who played uh, Maurice, like, he's he's great. Like, yeah. he did a great job. I I, I, yeah, I really liked his performance. He had quiet intensity about him. He did. But then so did Maurice right so he did a good job of portraying him like he did a really good job uh he looked the part so well he yeah. really looked yep. like young maurice so mm-hmm. uh and yeah like you know moments where he just broke down and stuff like that he was really good she mm-hmm. i felt like uh she was just um like she was fine but i i don't know i couldn't get a, a read on her really it felt like some of her reactions were like we're kind why? of like just because the script you know? demands yeah, it. Like, like we need to yeah. drive the mood for the next couple yeah. scenes so this is it was it. like well like, why are you upset why you feel i don't get it why it's just these are feel like just reactions less yeah. than mm-hmm. than like you know i i mean it wasn't bad or anything it was just i don't know and it was I, yeah, not yeah, very it's, it's to remind you of the constant stakes and, yeah. and like yeah I he has a family that, but that, outside yeah. of that i don't really feel like it served and a purpose that is particularly like meaningful worth yeah. mentioning. In a way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, yeah. clearly the Academy felt differently, but Well, well. yeah. Like uh yeah. Well, whoever votes the, the, the Canadian ones. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean you've kind of seen yeah. stuff like that too in a lot of like uh, sports movies too about the wife and how she's always like yeah. like or even Rocky worried and stuff. stuff. Yeah. yeah. Like you've seen that, well, right? To be fair, um hockey it, at though. the time it was pretty a pretty insane sport oh, yeah. in terms of player safety. Yeah. I mean, the what idea that we didn't wear, yeah. yeah, like um, yeah. you know, uh, you know, goalies were basically just, suicidal. Well, yeah, so. exactly. It's just like simmer down, lady. At least he's not a goalie. <laughs> I know, yeah. right? I'll, hey, he's in a good spot right now. At least he's not getting puck shot worse. at him. You yeah, know? Uh, yeah, could could be. Um, yeah, I, I I gotta say about the shots though. I I, uh, I loved how they kind of nailed his iconic goals and things like that. Mm-hmm. That was those were really awesome. Like you don't see that in sports movies as much. Like where they they kind of it's so stylized. Mm-hmm. And I just yeah. love I love the way that they shot those. Like the one that sticks out the most for me too is the you know uh, it's like famous too, right? Like he was carrying him on his back and yeah. still scored. It was this guy who was like twice his size. I forgot the name of uh, the player who was uh oh. I was holding him. Um, I can't remember either. Sort of the but next. I just remember, yeah, that's like a, a famous uh, Richard moment, right? So yeah. I, I uh, yeah, God, I um, I thought those were so well done and it, it looked great. It was like he's the only guy in the him or whoever's, uh, whoever's che- uh, checking him. They're the only ones on the ice the way it's shot. You know, it's so stylish. I, yeah. I liked it a lot. No, I definitely think like from what I've seen, it, this is by far the best looking hockey movie, I think. Yeah. And yeah. actually probably like one of the best photographed I, sports movies I gotta that I've say, seen. Because yeah. I've seen a lot of sports movies and this one is like 
every shot looked like the one shot that they, they, they used this motif uh, a few times, but each time they showed it, it just looked great. Every time was them hopping over the bench. Yeah. Um, yeah. The low oh. angle hopping over the bench, especially that one of Maurice when he's got like the cut in his eye. Mm-hmm. Oh, and he's, he's just, like bleeding. All yeah. Over and there's yeah. an, there is an iconic photo of when he shakes the guy's hand who hit him at the end of the game. Cause that was actually for, I think for the yeah. cup. Mm hmm during that game um and he comes back and he scores the all the win. all those shots were great like that whole like uh pulling back too and uh of where he goes and he like uh, breaks a stick over his head <laughs> over yeah. his head like damn like they pull back basically mm. uh, i like how a lot of the shots they're very close they're mm. very um you know with hockey a lot of a lot of what you watch is pulled back you get to see the action on a on a big scale but in this movie they they focus in a lot it's all about Maurice, mm-hmm. and that's why they shoot it that way. I just thought it was—it looked really good. Wow. Yeah, because mm-hmm. most yeah. sports movies that we see are all about the team and seeing how the team plays together. You know, with the Mighty Ducks. And the games are know. shot like a kind of like just like a visceral mishmash of chaos and adrenaline. And yeah, they're handheld. And, and, and then this, it's and they're like... just yeah, exactly. But they're actually taking the time to focus on these. These are the moments that we want to show you. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. so much capturing the game, but capturing the moments. Yeah. Yes, um, exactly, yeah. definitely. And it captured the moments, the iconic moments, mostly uh, really well. And even not showing them, but just hearing it, and mm-hmm. it just you put your you put all the images in your head. Like yeah. we don't see him score the eight points, but mm-hmm. we just see the aftermath. Which but then is great. again, a, a portion of his career was uh, you know there was no a lot of people didn't see it. They yeah. heard it on the radio, right? And, and, so, and that's mm-hmm. perfect. Yeah, it shows that because he had the first uh, televised hockey game was in like 1951 or 52 or something like that. Yeah, I guess yeah. you couldn't just pull out your phone to check the highlights. And no, the no, no. And uh, yeah, no, it, it really does capture that really well. And I loved it, how they showed like it wasn't just on the ice where they had to deal with, you know, discrimination or being handled upon it. It spread it throughout the fans, you know, yeah. even within themselves of uh, between the poor and the rich with the fence and all that. Like that stuff was it just again, it just added to so many layers to this uh again already great story that uh it's 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 good when you see um a story uh, like this handled properly you know yeah where they actually had a vision for this movie and it gave a shit like yeah. i mean yeah well yeah. yeah it was you could tell it's a passion for the people who are involved right yeah they, they actually care about uh about, you know about the history right? yeah now now personally my only real issue with the movie um <laughs> that i and i still have it um is i do feel like the movie just kind of stops mm-hmm it just it, and I feel like if for oh, the, at the end. yeah yeah it, it yeah. just kind of stops where I feel like what would have been a great actual ending um, and I alluded to it earlier was they had they showed they played in the movie that they gave him like a ten minute sound ovation when he got like named three stars in yeah, the same yeah. Game or something like that when he broke the record for forty five goals yeah um, and they showed how much they loved him I would love to have seen either the real version or maybe a reenactment of that famous ninety six uh, when he's old. And he comes out, and the yeah. fans still love him. Yeah, like I feel like that almost kind of would have been like a good like coming full circle. Yeah, a yeah. Good closure. I feel like that could have been a very <clears throat> a good like mm, how like how much he did have an impact, and that was like he retired in 1960, mm-hmm. yeah. and that happened in '96. So there's fans who never even saw him. Like yeah. their dads never even seen him because it's been that long, and yeah. yet they still loved him. Yeah. He meant that like much I, to him. Like I said, like I never saw him play. Neither not, did I. Not, yeah, no, of course. I, of course. Neither did right? Alex. Um. <laughs> yeah, like none of us saw him play, but like, I mean, he had a re- real impact on me growing mm-hmm. up and, and me, like my ideas of hockey and my the way that I viewed hockey. So yeah, like his impact was so widespread. I, not even just to, to Central Canada. Mm-hmm. I would say... Or, as for all Canadians, right? And you got to remember that his, uh, you got to remember his impact on just the game itself, right? He's just one of those quintessential hockey players that changed the game. Yes, absolutely. He, he's, when you talk about Maurice, you, he's in the same breath as Gordie Howe, Wayne Gretzky, Bobby Orr, uh, Brahel, any of those guys. They are the t- top tier players. And yeah, Maurice was definitely one of the, uh, one of the first in terms of he made uh, it exciting again. Yeah, he did. He yeah. uh, especially during the war and the depression when you know a lot of NHL players you know either left um, or they went to war yeah. or teams actually folded because um, a big misconception about the NHL with the original six is that those weren't the first six teams. Um, oh yeah, uh, there was actually other teams that had come before then. I think the most they had was nine, and then during the depression and leading up to the war, it dwindled down to just six mm-hmm. but yeah. it stayed six until like for like 20 years something mm-hmm. like that so yeah. 
but it, the game was full was shrinking and as they alluded to in the early in the movie that the yeah. league was, was this on the close verge to of collapse yeah. yeah and you know that also again shows to how much you know maurice meant not just to montreal but to the game in yeah. general and they honor him uh, by uh, they give out the award for most goals in a season, uh, and it's called the Maurice Rocket Richard Trophy, yeah. um, which I think there's no one better I would name it after. He yeah. was a transcender. Uh, he led. Yeah, he was just. I, there's nothing more. There's not much more I can say about the man. He's no, just, yeah, he's an and icon. I mean, you, you get a lot of names thrown around during that movie, right? Like mm-hmm. you have Smythe, right? Con Smythe, and yeah, yeah, and uh, <laughs> Frank Salky and all Selke, that. yeah. Literally, yeah. they're naming awards at that point because exactly. these guys are so <laughs> so essential mm-hmm. that yeah, they, they all ended up being their own individual awards, right? Um, but and it was funny, right? Like, uh, yeah, the scoring award, uh, Selkie, right? And, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So I, uh, I, I, there's one other thing. I, I think in terms of hockey movies, I there is one other hockey movie that I think is stylish in the way that this one is. I thought that Goon was really stylish oh, Goon, as yeah. well. So that's another hockey movie that I think kind of nails the whole, like just, just the style of it. Cause, uh, like a lot of the fight sequences, a lot of the, uh, the on ice action was really, was done in that way. But I think that, yeah, the other ones are a lot more by the numbers hockey, like on the ice, mm-hmm. a lot more by the numbers. But I think goon is another one that's kind of similar in that sense of, of having its own style, different kind, mm-hmm. but uh, for sure. Cause they're totally different. It's got more of a slap shot vibe. A goon. Uh, yeah, yeah. But mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's even more than that like they have a lot of like really neat slow-mo mixed with the gore again it's an r-rated it's a, it focuses on a totally yeah. different aspect of hockey yeah mm-hmm. so about the you know about the enforcer the the change actually that's kind of interesting because then this this movie focuses in on uh kind of you know the beginnings of hockey enforcers were really important then they kind of kind of gloss over that in the movie a little bit but mm-hmm. they they give hints right like boston right the idea yeah. that that Boston uh, were big bullies, right, in the league at the time. And, uh, you know, it was all about, like, fighting and, and proving your worth. How they just got, uh, you know, you'll get a player to take out the, to eliminate the all-star, right? Yeah. Uh, to kind of take him out of the game. And, uh, you know, that's interesting. And then, um, you know, a movie like Goon, which is modern day, talking about how enforcers are pretty much uh, not needed in the league anymore. No, and if you look so, at the current product in the NHL, they're, they're in a, you know... Uh, endangered species uh, exactly yeah but like, back then they were just in their heyday they were coming up oh you yeah know? it was important at the, because of the rise of all stars like mm-hmm. like maurice richard right they became important because they had to protect them right yeah and then now you look at it that many years that many decades later and it's like no now they're dying species because everybody can fight now and they can protect themselves, right? And it's a different game too. Like yeah. the whole, it's about speed and skill, and mm. and the guys who have the skill are also no slouches when it comes to to the physicality. Yeah, because they're so different now. Yeah, now you have to you if you're going to be a tough, you know, a fighter, you also have to have the skills and the hands to go to uh, a complement uh, what the fighting skills. Which again, the fighting is is dwindling. If you're just known for fighting, you won't play in the NHL. That well, you're long. just gonna get dumb penalties, and then yeah, you know, you're so gonna cost your team. Like, yeah, like they even like the joke, like he can't even skate. You know, yeah, that one, yeah. Uh, the Sean Avery. Uh, that's who mm. she, uh, I love that Sean Avery was playing him because mm-hmm. um, when funny, the yeah. when the movie came out, this was during when Sean Avery was like the most hated hockey player in the NHL. Yeah, yeah, he just, was like the agitator. Yeah, so just having him play, everyone was just like perfect casting yeah, you yeah. know and actually having um vincent le cavier um he played uh jean Beliveau in mm, the yeah. movie and they're actually related so um i thought that was very fitting cool. too um yeah no just uh, it's actually kind of funny just i'm like oh all, all these current nhl players i'm like oh no they actually are already retired it's been 12 years since this movie came out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. shit. I'm getting old. <laughs> just seeing... Yeah, they were current then. Not um, anymore. No, all yeah. of them have retired for like X plus years. Like my, You should know uh, Mike Ricci. He played for the Sharks for yeah. a long yeah. time. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, no. Alex, um, you mentioned how you had never really been familiar with the story. Yeah. And you just instantly were invested. Um, what were some of the main things that really caught your attention? Like, I didn't know that or... Um, really stood out for you the whole story of Maurice just the whole thing I I didn't know a damn thing about Maurice at least not that I could remember like I said uh, the face of Roy Dupree 
he looked really familiar, but then again, I don't think I've seen him before. So it's it's a weird thing mm-hmm. that I can't really explain. But yeah, he does. He fit the part. Like when I first saw him on the screen, I thought, yep, that's him. And I'm, I'm with it. I think it's something to do, and this is probably just for me, with regards to films that you have to read the subtitles. I think you have to concentrate that much more, not only to read, but to also catch up and pay attention to what's going on screen. I think that really helped to pull me in. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that particular point in time, the 30s and the 40s and the 50s, and and not knowing anything about hockey, especially back then, that just that opened my mind. It was great. Yeah, there's some there's some truth to that with subtitles too. Like I find, you know, there's obviously like a lot of people who complain about subtitles in general that I don't want to read, right? Oh. Yeah. Um, but then, but I don't know. Yeah, I always found that too that like subtitled movies were kind of like the best because they really would, you know, suck you in. And depending on how you learn and things, if you're someone who learns from reading and things, it just draws you into the dialogue that much more. It's an added well, kind of thing. Well, to you're pick kind up. of you're you're reading it and you're hearing it. You're yeah. absorbing it two ways. So. Exactly. So you learn yeah. more naturally like it's yeah yeah, so it's great i think it's great you definitely do focus in on the uh on the subtitles though so that is something that um you do tend to it's not um i wouldn't say it's distracting but uh you you think it detracts on the visual a bit yeah well it's a translation right so there's that aspect to it so there's a little bit of variation obviously that's just kind of inherent with translation yeah but, um, y- you know, you're, I feel like if you're, so there's two, so me personally, um, if I actually wanted to watch something in a different language uh, for the language and less for uh, just like um, for fun watching the movie, like, yeah. uh, recreationally, then I, I would turn off the subtitles mm. because um, then you you just focus on the subtitles and you don't focus on uh, the actual language being spoken as much because mm-hmm. you're in order to process the uh, like to actually process the story you're you want you focus on the language you know best right uh, if you actually want to focus in on I find that if you want to focus in on uh, on the language then if you turn off those subtitles it forces you to to really focus on the language and mm-hmm. and understand it because otherwise you're listening to to nothing to gibberish Mm -hmm. you're not getting any of it Mm -hmm. so i it i totally depends on your level on your level of understanding of that language yeah but if you're learning or you have Mm -hmm. an understanding if it's like at an intermediate level or something like that yeah i think you're more you're at an added benefit to just turn off the subtitles Yeah. yeah but um uh, I personally find with subtitles on, uh, I agree. Uh, yeah. it, you definitely focus in on the on the dialogue yeah. just naturally because yep. you're reading. And I, I like that personally. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's um, – yeah, yeah, the dialogue was really good. It's really interesting. Yeah, and I'd rather watch a movie with subtitles hearing the actor's natural voices yes. rather than a voiceover. Yes. yes. I, oh, well, I that, know. Oh, yeah. I think it adds to the whole – real flavor and authenticity yeah, of the film yeah. and I, I actually recently just had a moment of of, of that where um uh I, I showed my brother uh the raid for the first time yeah and oh, yeah. when it's There's a dub on that no when wow. it when it played it was it went instantly to the english dub oh boy yes. and yeah. with I it, can inst- only imagine. I instantly oh I, I was like nope no 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 yeah. heels I, to the no i instantly turned also, it off also you miss out on so much in that movie if you had like the english vo just cuz the way they deliver that dialogue yes. oh, holy yeah. smokes it's like intimidating yeah. it's, it's it adds to it, yeah. I, it does, I and I don't, yeah, especially for a movie like that, I don't think you can get the same kind of the, the yeah. kinds of, same kind of like, like frenzy and franticness I can, that I can actually in a like a sound studio than you would for no. actually like performing that. Yeah, like I can actually remember a bit of dialogue for a language I don't understand from that movie because it was so memorable. Yeah, yeah I think right? I know the line you're talking. about. I know about. you're talking about. You, you yeah. know, yeah, yeah, it's the one where he's on the bad guys on the radio and he just says, yeah. "Everyone have fun, put us on now, now, whatever." Yeah, 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 yeah that nah, line. Nah, nah. Yeah, 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 dude. Yeah. And I was like, holy shit. Like, yeah, no, it's in the trailer, so it, it instantly stands out. But no, I agree with you. I agree with you. Just when you hear the actual like enunciation from the actor, because yeah. there's always like a drawback. You're like, that doesn't sound his, that's not his voice. It's unnatural, yeah. Yeah, it sounds very true. natural. Like, you can get away with it in an animation film, yeah. in anime. Well, yeah, like, like Dragon Ball Z or something. Yeah, yeah, like, like any of that. You, like, to me, that's really the only way 
the only um, type of filmmaking with animation is the only way you can do dubbing and get yeah, away with like, it. Yeah, like, I won't be upset if I watch, like, a Studio Ghibli movie with, like, the... No. Like, especially modern ones yeah. with the English voice, well, VO. They yeah. give a shit, too. Because they really of, do give a yeah. shit, and they get good actors now, yeah. especially. Yeah, and, and, they get a, and they do a good, like translation dub they do a really the translation good, is very good yeah because yeah. that, that's sometimes the hardest thing especially we do with live action yeah. dubbing um for example uh, certain movies that were recorded uh, that had the whole movie was dubbed is the good the bad and the ugly yeah um the whole thing was was not recorded in english because only three actors spoke english the rest spoke italian yeah yeah so they had to redub everything including making it look like the italian actors are speaking english that's tough so they had to almost kind of write rewrite the dialogue just to match the cadence of their how their mouths move in italian yeah yikes uh, and there's like one line i remember like there's a character going like he said it he, the english line they ended up going with is more feeling because mm. how he said the feeling with his mouth movement and his Italian weight, I don't know. He said something different, right? Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, that that's the 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 bat, the negative side of doing a dub w- yeah. in English with live action is that sometimes you have to change the line in order to match, you know, as close as possible to what their mouths are saying. Yeah, and it's 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 really it really takes. I I feel like that takes you out more of the movie more than reading the subtitles. Sure. Oh, big. I don't yeah. think that subtitles take you out of the movie. I think the consensus, at least with us, was that uh, mm-hmm. it draws you in. But that is a lot of what um, the argument people have made yeah. against subtitles is that it takes you out of the movie because again, as accent, you're reading. Yeah. yeah. But to me, it's more distracting when you hear a voice that's not their yeah. voice. Oh yeah. I, I think it's the it's moviegoers that uh, go to movies to to unwind or like they they as distractions where they don't want to uh, like say at the end of a long work day or something like that and they just want to turn off i think those are the kinds of people who don't want to read subtitles because that's not what movies are for them mm-hmm. and i you know as much as i i don't think that that's you know like you should be upset about subtitles if they're mm, in a movie. Yeah. Like, there's no reason to be upset about it. If you're a moviegoer where it's like, okay, you don't like to read them because that's not how you watch movies, fine, but don't complain about yeah. there being subtitles in movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, just watch different movies then, right? Yeah. So, I, I, you know, I, I think that uh, that's, you know, I, I guess we all agree that, you know, subtitles are, are subtitle movies uh, can be more engaging than yeah. than than just regular yeah like english movies like yeah. if you speak english and regular english movies well and mm-hmm. those people too that just want to like turn their brains off and kind of watch it i mean that's fine too but at the same time if you you know if you kind of start watching movies with subtitles you do get used to it i mean that's after true. a while and then that it becomes very natural where it's not like a work you well, know or it's probably super the... effort or anything mm-hmm. it's becomes very natural yeah, yeah those those same people yeah. who say that probably never read ever well, so <laughs> um so you know i i think yeah if, if you read books you're probably fine reading subtitles because yeah you, that you're fine with reading mm-hmm. i think there's some people who just hate reading and that will extend to movies so yeah. um yeah you know whatever that's that's kind of a bullshit criticism yeah. yeah i also appreciate movies that um particularly this is a great example of that as where the characters are actually speaking their natural language and not mm. just speaking english with an accent yeah you know yeah. um to me like that's just like the the hollywoodization of doing like a, a foreign piece was they have to speak english because no one wants again no one wants to read yeah so because they feel like not no more people see that but we've seen that disproven over and over again mm-hmm. uh uh and glorious bastards being probably the most mainstream example of a movie doing like uh, four different languages doing four different languages yeah. not just like little bits here and there no for like entire scenes yep. you're speaking german french or italian mm-hmm. yeah. and it made like 400 million dollars so yep. to me like that argument doesn't hold anything because yeah it, all it takes to me is a good story and good premise people watch anything yeah yep. like, look how successful the raid movies are is what I had been and well, for indonesian foreign yeah. films um <laughs> where and especially the second one which again the second one had japanese indonesian and english at times it did yeah. it's also so, got some of the most stylistic like best action in a movie yeah, all yeah. Of time. yeah. so yeah, but still, like even if you didn't want to pay attention to the dialogue you would still get you have a lot so out much of it, to come so. off of yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah but, but yeah. there's but there's been lots of great action movies that have come out of uh, either japan korea or whatever but mm. they don't do well out here yeah no. um yeah. But we've seen how that like more movies are pushing around that whole like idea of that English 
English-speaking movies won't sell in English countries. Like, no, they they can. Yeah. They just have like the fact that they are great action movies. People are seeing it because of that. They don't care about the language anymore, mm-hmm. and I I like that. Yeah. Um, and I like movies again. Like my whole point is, I like seeing movies that actually have authentic language, and they don't. You know, make pussyfoot around making it mostly English or a, bit, a little bit of French here and there. You know, that's the one thing I'll knock against, like, um, just because it's fresh in my mind was Scarface. They're all speaking English and they barely speak any Spanish, even though all the characters are Spanish. Sure. Yeah. Um, They'll just, like, speak with an accent. Yeah. yeah. And so I, f- I feel like, like, that era of kind of doing movies will, has been slowly disappearing because mm. I think we're becoming a lot more accepting of different languages mm-hmm. at least watching it in mainstream films it's no longer really a crux as i think it was no we're still not quite there though too no like we've still got a long yeah. way to go um but well, we're on the right track i think mm. you know uh, another small little detail in uh, in this movie that i liked was uh uh the fact that uh they kind of just it just it, it's not explicit it's not uh, a focal point for the movie but early in the movie uh, you know, as his NHL career is starting, his uh, his English is so bad that it's it's basically like a cup word here or there. You can't even. And then really, just yeah. uh, he progressively gets. But there are moments like as they jump ahead in time where he'll have to speak English to a reporter to whatever, right? Mm-hmm. And he'll you'll notice that his English improves and then it improves again. Yeah. And it's mm-hmm. just it's just a subtle thing, but like as his career goes uh, on and he you know, he has to uh, engage with English speakers more, mm-hmm. his English gets better. Uh, it's just a neat little thing that mm-hmm. I that I kind of I kind of appreciate it because I was like, yeah, totally, right? It's yeah. just like a uh, it's just the details, you know? Yeah, and I kind of like that it parallels when, uh, not at the same time, but uh, it uh, kind of works when the coach, um, when they win the cup uh, later on in the movie, where he congratulates and thanks his players. In that oh, one his line. French is just horrible. It, I know, it, but, he, <laughs> but the fact that he's trying yeah, and he yeah. did it yeah, that was shows, was yeah, shows like how far not only has Maurice come along, but also the coach and how yeah. both English and French have made – um, progress you know a little bit and it shows sure. that you can you can find common ground you can this can, can lead to better things and yeah um, I, that was a, a nice yeah moment. but the onus is always, that was also the point is that the onus is always on the French speaker to learn more English right? that's true yeah, yeah. Um, and, and I, that's where a lot of the resentment I and it's interesting but that's where a lot of the resentment comes from from uh, like French speakers not really wanting to have to speak English yeah. like even though they know how to speak you know they'll know how to speak English, but you know they don't want to you, it to be an obligation because it comes from that history, right? Yeah, the yeah, idea yeah. that like you expect me to speak English, but you know why why shouldn't you speak French? No, that's you a, know that's like, a that's that's a fair point. That's uh, that's Canadian too. Right? Oh yeah, and I, I totally get that mentality. Yeah, mm-hmm. you don't have to be like you know if somebody's like trying you know you don't have to be a jerk about it is the way I look at it because people get really passionate about this stuff and yeah. you should just try to be nice to each other and communicate. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Right, and just find a middle ground or whatever. But like uh, you know, both sides can be a little stubborn about it too. But I understand where the French come from because they it's uh, like French Canadians, especially because it's a uh, you know it was minority in in Canada. So um, yeah, it's a much more challenging position to be in. So uh, a lot of uh, a lot of um, change since then, but uh, yeah, like it, that was a the, yeah. I just I love that detail though, yeah. like that that sm- those small little details. And yeah, I love that moment by the way that mm. uh, where he uh, the <laughs> he pulls out a little piece of paper and yeah. reads, reads his little French <laughs> sentence that he's prepared. It was it was uh, it was meaningful. It was yeah. meaningful. It's like he got lessons from ja- from Zach from Zach <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> big time Canadien. Oh, yeah, God. that, that uh, <laughs> New Brunswick French education there. Yeah. L'ordinateur. <laughs> Tres bien. Oui, oui. Oui, oui. Jeez. Um, Zach, you had mentioned uh, that you felt it was a little slow in places. Uh, a little bit. Where where exactly did you, um, did you feel this the most like happening? Like what scenes? Because it felt like it wasn't just one part. Like I mentioned the mm. ending being a little bit of a gripe for me. Yeah, and I remembered that too. I forgot to mention the ending. I'm with you on that too. Mm. Um, it just kind of stops and it's like, yeah. oh, that's kind of, it's like, it's almost like they didn't know how to end it. Like, so they're just a like, little okay, bit. let's have them walk down a hallway and, yeah. you know, get a sexy eyes there. Yeah, like, but, I, like I don't think they should have like continued with the five 
five consecutive Stanley. No, it's Cups. a little too much. I that, get that. That's a, that's a, like the, to me like that's that's just an afterthought in the overall story. But sure. what I brought up the the, yeah. uh, the when he's older and like yeah, I I think uh, I don't think it, it matters how how they did it um, as long as they they had ended it on his impact. Mm-hmm. But they didn't really. No. They just said you won five more Stanley Cups, and you're like, well, yeah, he won a lot of Stanley Cups yeah. already, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's not, you know, that's not like the impactful text at the end that you're used to mm-hmm. when when you're talking about like an important figure's legacy. Yeah, I think that his legacy, like you could have shown anything. You could have shown what you said, where mm-hmm. you know, uh, year like in color years later on TV, you're seeing the real old Maurice Richard yeah. getting all the respect and all the love from from uh from everybody in montreal you yeah know? um you could show you could show like old footage of him you could like real footage mm-hmm. you could show so many different things yeah that's something they didn't they, that you they didn't do that a lot of biopics yeah. do is actually showing the real person that they're uh, depicting they mm-hmm. like most uh biopics we usually see a, a, see the photo. Oh, hell. a photo yeah. or you actually see them in the actual movie sometimes. yeah even that stuff would have been fine because you would have yeah. like felt it you would have felt like it's real well, you would have felt like this is legacy especially because mm-hmm. of all the effort they went to to make the the visuals kind of match in a way and yeah give a similar yeah. vibe yeah having been in montreal for the first time last year uh not much in terms of like how the houses, all the stairs. Yeah, they're everywhere yep. in that city. Like I'm like, oh, yeah. you could have picked any block because there's the multi layered and all that. Mm-hmm. It's like that's not much has changed in terms of the architecture. Nope. No, it's really cool actually. Just yeah. the old architecture, it's really pretty. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. my, I liked how Montreal. I just yeah, the whole movie just it, it's it's really it's one it's an honestly one of the better looking films i think we've watched in this sh- overall in the show i think it's definitely up there well it's cool that it's a canadian film too because i'm so used to seeing so many canadian productions and it just they don't give a shit it's just like oh they might have a good story but yeah. the technical like aspect is just yeah poor the craftsmanship like, and all yeah that. and it's yeah. just like it just detracts and to, it makes it like mediocre at best where it's like all right at least you were okay like you know that's really shitty right whereas this one they look like they kind of you know they swung high you know yeah they actually cared about this and yeah it looked really good i was really impressed yeah no uh, yeah. It, it hasn't aged at all it's still yep yeah oh, no honestly yeah. like i i can't I, I can i'm just gonna go on a limb i do think that like this is the best photographed sports movie that i've seen mm-hmm like I can't think of any other sports movie. Remember the Titans. No, yeah. this is better shot than Remember the Titans. Like Remember the yeah, Titans yeah. is 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 another. Remember the Titans. Radio. Is, yeah. Um, Mystery yeah. Alaska. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. yeah. But that's another example of like the team who's Air the under god, yeah, under god who sucks, <laughs> and then they face against the New York Rangers at the end of the game in Alaska. So it, it yeah. reminds me of best hockey movie MVP. Well, I was just about to get into the monkey business because the spy <laughs> mate count, even though there's there's no sports, no. but I just think that's a great movie. I just want to pitch it out <laughs> to everybody. Underrated, yeah. underrated movie. Soft when I was meters. trying to find um, box office results for The Rocket, the lowest um, one, there's only like 16 movies on the list, and near the bottom was MVP <laughs> in terms of box office returns. Oh boy! Um, but then uh, you know what the number one hockey movie at box office is? Miracle. Um, yeah. Is yeah. it Miracle, it's really? Miracle, I figured yeah. it'd be like Slapshot or something. No. Nope. It has to be Miracle because it was about... Uh, it, it had a lot of... Yeah, it was a USA. So yeah. you had a lot of uh, Russ, people in the US uh, who would give a crap it's about a, it. Di- it's a Disney Cold movie. War. Yeah, Disney movie Disney, too. Yeah, Disney fair. movie, yeah. And like... Oh, the Mighty Ducks, man. Yeah. And, and the Mighty Ducks. Knuckle Puck. <laughs> Mighty Ducks, yeah. Lion V. Yeah. <laughs> Mighty Ducks. Yeah. The best talkie movie. <laughs> no, sure. a, a score that probably did musical. remarkably well on home video. Score it, no, that movie is is in the top five for highest grossing uh, hockey movies. Score a hockey musical? No. <laughs> <laughs> Olivia Newton John, man. Can't say I've seen that movie. No, Olivia Newton John. Can't say I will ever see that movie. You should. Yeah. Um. So yeah, uh, I think we're uh, about ready to wrap. Yeah, up. we're running out of gas. Uh, well, yeah. we're, well, we're, 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 <laughs> well, you know what? I will say this: <laughs> NHL commissioner. Uh, probably worst job ever, just yeah. because uh, they all suck. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah look at Batman. Look at Batman this shit. sucks. Like, you know, <laughs> it's, it's 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 the thankless job of yeah. being in charge of a hockey. Thankless league. job, totally. And uh, they do do the politics do suck. So well, they yeah, they are in charge of the shitty politics. Yep, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I heard so. I heard Batman got just. Uh, 
Reamed. Nobody likes him. Reamed. I heard he got a little reamed a little uh, yesterday by Ron McLean on CBC during the All Star game. I heard he called him out and all that stuff. So good. Yeah, this this year this Olympics is going to be a little bit. Uh, you I know, think, this, I think this it, year's Olympics are going to be a little. It's it's the first time like that that I the, that I can you know that in uh, twenty years since yeah. So like I think this is the the first time in my lifetime that I would be able to remember because there, there's no I don't remember twenty years ago hmm. like that. Yeah, that 19, Olympics right? I was quite yeah. young, so. Yeah. But yeah, like you know, it's it's kind of it feels like the end of an era, like in a way, because yeah. it's been a few decades, right? So I, I I think this is going to be a one and done. I feel like they're going to come back. They're going to like be like. Oh, I mean, shit. Crosby pushed against it, like pushed back a lot when it came to when they were making that decision and sure. you know and even he couldn't and he's kind of like a poster uh, yeah. most NHL's of the players player, I think right? were against it's, it's, it's going like, to be a part of the next CBA re- agreement because yeah. they got to get because yeah. the NHL wants to push the World Cup so they have to find a good deal with that because mm. the players don't like playing in September but um, they might talk about pushing the World Cup to February so yeah. oh, wow. make it every so like every two years you're going to have like a February international ch- uh, tournament whether it's the so Olympics or the World Cup that's not a bad idea it's not a bad idea yeah. and if they can get to that then everybody wins but they got to get yeah. to that yeah. and and like you know it'll be fun to watch both and you might have passion for both tournaments so like yeah. that would be cool to watch but, but you know like yeah it, you know uh, to kind of get back to uh, the whole like thankless job kind of thing like it's funny because I actually remember, um, like, because I always I always remember watching and seeing like Batman especially come out and just booze, dude. Yeah, just booze, oh, yeah. like audible, audible boo. Even on camera, usually on camera, it's like hard to capture. It's not like being there. It's hard to capture all those booze. But damn, you feel it when he goes out there oh, sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like if you ever see Batman on the ice, it's like it's glorious every year. Holy yeah. shit! They that that guy is no fans. <laughs> yeah, and it's great when you um like to me it, it means a lot more when the Stanley Cup is being presented on on, on in, in a city that is not known for being having passionate hockey fans yeah. and seeing them equally hate them as much as like. Yeah. Uh, for example, Nashville. Um, they've recently come along as being like this very big hockey city. Yep. Yeah. But ten years ago, no one would have said that. But oh, hearing course. them boo the shit out of Gary Batman mm-hmm. in the finals uh, last yeah. season was awesome. You know, he, I, I'm sure he he's for sure used to it. And oh, I'm, I'm sure, sure he. I'm heard, sure he doesn't I heard, care. I, I heard he did this once. Yeah. Um, just oh, he he pulled a, he pulled a Patrick Waugh. Okay. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and a Carey Price. Um. Okay, now okay, yeah, it's a Montreal thing. It um. is. The fans <laughs> just turn on the goalies at some point. The goalies go, ah, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Bring it. Yeah, after uh, a while, yeah. But uh, yeah, like it's it's. Uh, yeah. So yeah, this this movie. Watching this, I'm like, oh yeah, it's always sucked for them. That position is is real bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 At least he didn't get assaulted. <laughs> At least get Batman has started a riot, <laughs> like himself. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. It could be worse. It uh, could be. You never know. There's still time. There's yeah yeah yeah. He's hey, not retired yet. Yeah, there's another locket around the corner, so we'll see. Yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, let's see what happens in Calgary. <laughs> Anyways, um, so I guess we'll wrap this up. Uh, I'll get, get our final thoughts. Um, I'll start with Alex. Uh, overall, <laughs> final thoughts on the movie? I do think it's underrated. Because mm-hmm. I've, I've seen a lot of movies, never heard of this one. And like I said, not a sports fan. Love this movie. Can't recommend it enough. It, it's got that, that uh, not underrated Canadian touch, but it's got that Canadian touch of where they don't overplay the drama. They just bring it up a little bit, and then they move on. It, it's not like some American productions where the score comes up and everyone's crying and they're trying to milk it for all it's worth. That's not what a lot of Canadian films do. And this one is one of those films. It's very subdued, just like the main character. I got into the main character uh, when his younger self said that he's he's not one for small talk. Mm-hmm. I identified with that, and I liked it. You had said you had talked about some of the shots in the film and I'm going to contradict myself with what I said in the beginning that I didn't concentrate on the shots. Well, I think some of the the tracking shots on the ice, either in front of or behind the main character, Maurice, I think those shots could have been longer Mm. because they're, they're following him and it's great to see him on the ice. I know it's technically difficult to do, but it, it pulls off so well if they could have done it. Mm -hmm. It's just like with, with North American produced 
martial arts movies. Right. There's a lot of quick cuts. There's a lot of yeah. changing of the angles. No, what you should do, anyone who's listening who wants to make a martial arts film, watch a lot of Asian kung fu movies. A lot of times what they'll do, they'll step back about 10 feet from where the actors are going to fight. They'll set up the camera there. It's just two actors, and they'll have them go at it for a good five or ten minutes. Mm-hmm. That's your shot. That's what people want to see. They don't want to see a bunch of cuts. So if they could have done a little bit more following on Maurice, that would have been great. Mm-hmm. And, Andrew, you had talked about sport uniting a, a country. And, of course, that was in the film as well. There's a movie that I'm just blanking on. It was such a, a famous movie. Starring Matt Damon and Morgan Freeman about South African football players. Oh, oh Invictus. Yeah. Invictus, yeah. yes. Yeah. Same same idea, sport uniting people. So that helped as well. And I want to give a shout out to Trevor and Corey Turner because for the amount of times back in the 90s when I went over to their place to watch either wrestling or hockey, I'm surprised either they didn't say anything about... Um, Maurice Richard, or I wasn't listening, because we they they love hockey even to this day. They got a hand they in their hockey fan cards. Freaking love <laughs> hockey, and and Trevor and Corey, if you're listening, I hope your mom is doing okay. <laughs> and I, I got to give a shout out to Nick Broadbent as well of the Jabroni Jabber podcast because almost every day in high school that I can remember, he would be wearing a red Canadiens jersey, mm. and he'd be proud of it, no matter how much shit people talk to him, either people in high school or people from the mill, or just people in the mall, he would wear it proudly. Nice. And I dig that. So yes, this is a very good film. Go out and see The Rocket. I would I would say, like I've said before, see it now, then go see it again in five years. I think you'll appreciate it more. I'm going to see it again mm-hmm. in another few years, and I think I'll like it. Yeah, no, it, it had been about that much time since I last seen the movie, too. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, no, it definitely, uh, definitely, I still think, holds up for sure. And uh, it's a solid piece. Like, for, you know... For, for Canadian films that are the Canadian film genre in general, how like it's sort of lacking a, a true identity. Um, I feel mm. like this is definitely one of the uh, most notable Canadian films to come out to showcase what Canada can do. Yeah. You know, if you were to you know put together a good list of Canadian films of like to sh- show off, this is definitely, I would put that on the list for sure. Yeah. Especially with the national pastime. Oh yeah. We can do that well. Big yeah. time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Andrew? Yeah, I, for sure it's underrated. Just because I, I, I feel like, uh, I feel like nobody sees like, has seen this movie. I, I, I think the only reason I saw it is because we're, you know, I was a part of a hockey family, and I, also my family cared a lot about, uh, especially like me and my mom cared a lot about Maurice Richard. So obviously we saw this movie. Um, yeah, but I, I feel like most people I talk to haven't seen this movie. I was surprised to see the Rotten Tomato meter. Uh, the uh, score there at 58%. I was a little surprised by that. I thought it would have been higher. So I guess it critically, it was kind of polarizing as well. So I, I, I think it's, uh, it, it's much better than that. You mm-hmm. know, like, as we said, it's beautifully shot. The story is engaging and it's not, uh, it's not just about the sport. The It's a very character driven story. It's about Maurice. It's about his, his journey and his impact, right? And and his struggle. Mm-hmm. I would say it's it's yeah. mostly about his struggle. And I think they pull it off really well. So I, I highly recommend it. Definitely. Awesome. Is that cool? Maybe the uh, Rotten Tomatoes meter is a reflection of the English and the French. Um, yeah, you know, it's just a bunch of, yeah. <laughs> of the English going. Yeah, the tension. Nope. Yeah, that's what it is. No. Nope. <laughs> um, yeah, so this movie is pretty good, and I learned that you know if you're ever lucky enough to uh, to be a part of a Stanley Cup winning team and you win the cup and you're, you're taking drinks out of it and you're like, what do I do now? Just send it to your dishwasher. That's <laughs> well, what that, you do. That's you some just of the, send it to your dishwasher. <laughs> Some and of you, the, you'll, be, you'll take care of it. Some of the stories yeah, of what right? actually happened to the Stanley Cup. It's amazing. You know, it's oh. like, oh, the, 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 the damage and the miles that cup has traveled. Yeah, and has oh. it, didn't it almost get lost or something? Like, Probably. Like Numerous occasions. They like, got tossed into yeah. pools. Now um, now it literally get, has handlers. Like, it is so important. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, it's funny to think of it being like this throwaway thing back in the day. Yeah. Literally handled with kid gloves. Yeah. yeah. Now, yeah, you literally have to wear gloves to, to handle that yeah. thing. Only yeah. players who just won can. Are allowed to touch yeah. it without gloves. Yeah. yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. 
it's just, that's but, funny man but yeah i mean i don't know i, I kind of said all that really needs to be said really i mean it's a gorgeous movie that's really struck me i thought the performances were really good um yeah and it's a story that needed to be told and it's not one that you hear a lot i mean you hear a lot of similar stories that you know revolve like around race or you know other things right and it's kind of cool that it's more of like a a language kind of uh you know tension and things like that it's, yeah. it's pretty cool and i mean yeah it's something that we need to talk about more for sure obviously it's not nearly as bad as it is was back then in canada at least but um yeah it's pretty cool cool yeah wash your cup wash your stanley cup yeah <laughs> yeah uh Riley? yeah see this movie it's great uh the problem with the sports movie genre is that it can tend to get pretty exhaustive pretty quickly but this one i think is is a, is a breath of fresh air really uh definitely a lot of uh a lot of rewatch value there a lot of a lot of positive characteristics and plenty of things to set it apart so i would absolutely say this is an underrated movie and would recommend it to anyone awesome yep and uh for my final thoughts uh yeah i definitely think this is an underrated movie i think it's underrated uh sports movie um i think it's underrated canadian movie um i it's just it's a great movie it's it's uh well executed it's well shot it's well acted just you know everything just it clicks it's um one of the things about why I think this stands ahead on top more on top of hockey movies is a lot of hockey movies I feel like are made by people who have never watched hockey mm. or have played it. And it almost like it doesn't take the game seriously. Yeah. It's almost like used as a prop. Yeah. Um, where they almost kind of make fun of it. The fact that they're on ice and, you know, a little puck or whatever like that. I've seen those jokes, you know, they're, and for it's nice to see a movie that t- that takes a sport seriously and showcasing actually what it means to be a hockey player the struggles and all that just how hard it is to play in the game like those moments i feel like are not captured a lot in most hockey movies it's usually just played for laughs um and i appreciate that and yeah no so overall go see it um if you love sports if you love hockey or you love the montreal canadians definitely go see this um I'd like to give a shout out to Adam Kramer, who's the one who introduced me to this movie all those years ago. He is a huge Habs fan as well and proudly wore his Canadian jersey as well to high school. <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, he's... Um, uh, thank you for the, showing me this movie all those years ago, Kramer. And uh, next week we have Zach. Uh, it's his turn next. It is uh, my turn, yeah. Any uh, hints uh, what we're uh, going to have to suffer through? Well, suffer through. That's just, that's a different kind of show we used to do, Jack. That's true. No, this is going to be a glorious occasion. Green Christmas. Yeah, Green Christmas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> green yeah, Italian no. Christmas. Italian Christmas. Oh yeah. boy. It might be might be an Italian movie. You never know. You Italian. never know. Oh, all might right. Be, might be. Might be. Might be from Peru. You might never be know. From Peru. Yeah. Is it a is it a horror movie though? I don't know what I'm picking yet. So you, I can oh, just what? So I can just kind of say like, oh yeah, it's from Venezuela, <laughs> and then, sure. <laughs> And then it's like I don't know what I'm picking. I have so many movies to pick from. That's my problem. Is I have I have a huge could staff. very well be from Venezuela. It could but... be. I mean, you, hey, you, any guess is as good as mine at this point. I have I have a lot of great movies that I'm trying to pick through, and I'm kind of like, okay, mm-hmm. I don't know what to pick. But uh, I mean, I guess we'll see. I I don't know myself yet. Well, if you he's further... gonna yeah. he's gonna put forward the movie The Comet. That's that's, that's <laughs> the your next yeah. movie, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that it was his first nickname. You know, the comment. Imagine yeah, that if that's, was something. Imagine new for if me that when I stuck. It. Imagine yeah. if that stuck. Just oh. <laughs> it wouldn't. Comet Richard it doesn't roll. No, it time. doesn't work. And it, like, like one other thing that they completely did not have in this movie was all at all is that you did you guys know that Maurice uh, Richard's brother also played in the NHL with him. Really, um, I did. I knew that. So... Late, like he joined. <laughs> actually, funny enough, he yeah. joined the. Uh, you know what? Actually, I think he joined the team. The next season, mm. when yeah, they won their five straight, there's photos it's... of them playing together. Yeah, like uh, so the pocket I, rocket was his nickname. The pocket, ah, I knew that funny. too. I knew that too. God damn, like <laughs> yeah, obviously a big fan over here. Like my mom actually bought a photo which would be worth like an insane amount now because uh, it was a photo of him and his brother. Uh, together on the ice, like black and white photo signed by them. Oh, wow. nice. Yeah, signed by both Maurice Damn. and his brother. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, like, but she's, I think she's having a hard, she's was having a hard time finding it because it, it was like put away 
and then she's trying to find it. But I remember her having that photo. It was signed. It had like the docu- like authentic, uh, document of authenticity. Nice. This was before he died. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then uh, and then I guess now it would be like it's uh, especially special because uh, it's, you know, it's kind of like a, a, a piece of history now in a way. Like you're like, you know, it's uh, signed by him. So that's, uh, yeah, it's kind of crazy. I, I almost forgot that I, we had that. But yeah, no, yeah. Mar- Henri Richard is um, he holds a record that I don't think will ever be broken in the NHL, which is most Stanley Cups won by one player. Um, yeah he won 11 that was pretty Whoa. crazy um <laughs> oh yeah that rec- yeah <laughs> yeah there's some records you look at and you're like nah not in this nhl no no, <laughs> no it's a different game now yeah. right? like, like half, most of gretzky's yeah, records <laughs> at least half of his records i don't like 50 goals in 39 games nope i don't see that game broken nope. anytime soon <laughs> no, um or like eight straight like art ross trophies and like nope. nine mm-hmm. straight you know heart trophies for mvp and like no yeah like it's just a different game and you know uh like to say like Gretzky's been on record as well as saying like uh, yeah it's a different game now well it like, is it, yeah yeah I, there's a reason why I don't he, he's trying not he's trying to kind of he's, he's a trying pretty, to say he's I'm pretty still humble the best, about okay? the whole thing mm-hmm. I'm still the best. Uh, and trying to say like yeah I don't think that I'm like it's better than these guys that I think that they're just they have to work so hard and he's so humble about it when he talks about it so yeah. um yeah for sure but um, I am still the great one. Mar- uh, Maurice will <laughs> will hold on to that record. So mm-hmm. yeah, no Gretzky will. Uh, no, for Stanley Cups. Oh, Henri Richard. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Henri. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Maurice won eight. Oh, um, just I mean, just eight. I don't think anybody will beat Mark Messier's uh, record of the amount of Lay's chips he's oh, eaten. I buy record. Bitch can eat just one. Yeah, yeah. He's a hockey <laughs> player who's eaten the most uh, potato chips. Uh, this podcast uh, sponsored by Lay's. <laughs> <laughs> And on that note, uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us again. Uh, tune in next week for Zacho's pick. And uh, I guess uh should end it with... Uh... Rocket Man! A bientôt, tout le monde. Oh, ho, ho! Al Sandy. Au revoir.